Premiere Pro has a lot of features that make video editing very easy, but it also comes with its drawbacks. That's why in this video, I'm going to be giving my honest thoughts on the software, reviewing some of the pros and cons of the software as a freelance video editor. Let's start with the good. There's a lot of integrations that come with Premiere Pro that make the software very appealing. For starters, you can get the entire Adobe Creative Cloud where you get access to every single creative app that you can imagine. You can get Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign. So if you're a jack of all trades and you do a little bit of everything, this would be a great option because you can get the whole suite and get access to not only Premiere Pro when it comes to video editing, but all the other creative design apps as well. Adobe also has a tool called Frame.io, which makes reviewing and sending client videos very easy for review. You can send clients a review link and they can click approve, leave comments, and give you feedback right away. In addition to that, I wanna also mention that Premiere Pro is probably one of the most widely known softwares when it comes to video editing. So if you're starting out in video editing and you want to learn more about it, there's gonna be a lot of resources and tutorials that you can follow to learn more about the software, or say if you get stuck, there's a lot of resources to help you troubleshoot as well. For example, you can subscribe to this channel if you like the content, and there's hundreds of tutorials on Premiere Pro that you can watch on my channel. But in addition to the tutorials, there's a lot of plugins and support for Premiere Pro as well. Let's say if you want presets, transitions, templates, Premiere Pro and the Adobe apps, even After Effects, are very highly supported and there's gonna be a lot more templates and assets for these apps compared to a lot of the other competitors. Let's take Envato Elements for an example. If we go to Envato Elements' website and we scroll down, you can see that there's 77,000 After Effects templates, 36,000 Premiere Pro templates. And if you take a look at some of the other popular editing software, such as Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, there's not as much for those other softwares. Now it's not just Envato Elements, this goes across the board for a lot of other stock websites as well. So if you plan to use a lot of templates, Premiere Pro might be a good option for you. Now let's go into the next one. And the next one is kind of controversial, but let me explain. I believe Premiere Pro is pretty beginner friendly, to be honest. There's a lot of features, let's say if you're just starting in video editing, that make video editing very easy in the software. For example, let's say if I'm new to color grading, Premiere Pro makes it very easy. Let's say if I wanted to color correct this clip here, I can just switch my workspace to color. And granted, a lot of these options are very complicated. You'll have to learn how to use all these tools. But let's say if you're just getting started, you can easily just go to basic color correction and have Premiere Pro auto color correct your footage for you by clicking on this auto button here. And you can see it automatically color corrected it. You have an intensity slider. It just makes it very easy to get started in the software. Where if you take a look at DaVinci Resolve and a lot of the other softwares, it's more intimidating. Another example is when it comes to audio. Let's say if I want to just make this audio sound like a podcast, you can easily just go into the audio workspace from the top right menu. And then under the preset option underneath essential sound here, you can just choose podcast voice. This automatically makes the audio sound like a podcast. If you need to clean up the audio, you can easily just click enhance. This is a new feature in Premiere Pro called enhanced speech where you can clean up noisy audio using AI. There's a lot of tools and presets to audio automatically edit your footage for you. Another one that I often use is to transcribe and delete gaps and filler words in my videos. So let's say I have this 34 minute video, as you can see on my timeline, there's a lot of gaps, there's a lot of filler words. I can have Premiere Pro automatically edit this footage for me if I switch over to the text-based editing workspace. From the top left menu, we can click transcript. You can see that it transcribed my audio for me and I can go to the filter button, select pauses, then click delete and then delete all. You can see it automatically deleted all the pauses. You can also do the same with filler words as well, such as ums and ahs. Now at the end of the day, I believe Premiere Pro in my honest opinion is kind of like middle of the road complexity. It might be easy to get started, but as you dive deeper, you're gonna to have to invest time to learn actually how the tools work if you wanna take this seriously as a video editor. Now let's go into the next one. As you can see, I switched between a lot of different interfaces. And the, the unique thing about Premiere Pro is that it's completely customizable. So let's say if you have two monitors, three monitors, you have a vertical monitor, you can rearrange the panels in your workspace to fit your needs, which is really cool. So as you can see, when I switch from the different workspaces, they're designated based on the task. So when I was in color correction, you can see it brought up the color options. And let's say if I didn't want this panel here, you can just easily click and drag it around to move it around. Say if I wanted it at the top left, you can even undock panels by clicking on a hamburger menu and going to undock panel group. You can see this is just its own thing. 
I can move this to another screen if I wanted to, where other softwares aren't gonna be as customizable for the user interface. And if you get messed up like this, you can just automatically reset your workspace by going to the workspaces button and go to reset to save layout. And this brings you back to where you were before. All right, so that's all the good things I have to say about Premiere Pro. It's a very solid editing tool, but it does come with its drawbacks and its cons. So let's talk about some of the cons. The first and most obvious one, especially when you compare the different softwares, is Premiere Pro is relatively high priced. Now compare this with CapCut and DaVinci Resolve, where you can start for free, really. You can upgrade to a paid version, which is actually a lifetime version for DaVinci Resolve. But that's one of the biggest cons with Premiere Pro and Adobe in general is that they're relatively expensive. Now that we have the obvious one out of the way, let's talk about a little bit of the nitty gritty of Premiere Pro and Adobe in general. Sometimes the software has a mind of its own, and I can speak on this from personal experience. Sometimes the apps update on their own. Uh, so if you get Premiere Pro or any of the Adobe apps, you have access to the Adobe Cloud Manager. And in here you can install update apps, but when a new update becomes available, by default, the software automatically updates. Now if you're working in the middle of a project, this might be troublesome because you might have to convert project files, especially if you're in Premiere Pro or After Effects, to the latest version. And not only that, but a lot of times when it comes to new updates, especially new software versions of either Premiere Pro or any of the apps, a lot of times the first release of a new software in the model year is going to be very buggy. That's why a lot of times when Premiere Pro or Adobe comes out with like the 2025 version of Premiere Pro, usually I wait like two to three months before I actually update to the latest version because just in case there's a lot of bugs, sometimes there's quirks about it. For example, I'm in 2025 right now. If I go into the audio track mixer, I can't scroll all the way down to the very bottom to rename the track names of the actual tracks here. You can see I can't, can't easily get to the bottom here. And this is very common. This is just one example, but there's going to be things like this that pop up throughout updates as you use Premiere Pro just weird quirks. One of the last versions of Premiere Pro, one of the audio effects didn't work. Or let's say uh, one example was like, say if I added an effect, and I toggled it off, toggled it on. Some of the controls might be a little weird when Premiere Pro auto updates, but usually down the line, Adobe fixes these issues with a software update. As you can see, if we go back into Creative Cloud here, sometimes where it says, what are they updating? It includes like important fixes and performance improvements. So Adobe sometimes is aware of these bugs and will auto update and fix them accordingly. The other thing with updates I wanted to touch on really quickly here is that sometimes when you update a software, it takes away legacy features. For example, one of the features I always liked using was the curves effect, because this would just apply a simple curves effect without having to go into Lumetri Color. And as you can see, if I type in curves, it doesn't pop up anymore. So they've removed this legacy effect from the effects. And you can no longer add it to your clips. And the other caveat with this too is, let's say if we go back and we want to install an earlier version of Premiere Pro. Let's go into our apps. Let's go to this ellipses menu and let's go into other versions. You can see we can only go back to version 24. So you can only go back up to one year of the version of the software. So that's just something to keep in mind when you choose Premiere Pro as a software. Now, Premiere Pro has a tendency to crash a lot. Now, in my personal experience, I haven't witnessed this as much as other people that use the software. But I do have to say sometimes it does crash, especially if you're working with intensive effects and depending on your own computer and software. I will take a moment to say I wouldn't use Premiere Pro on a lower grade laptop or computer. It's not really friendly with entry level computers. I would get a medium to high end computer. For example, I work on a MacBook Pro, one of the best computers that you can get and Premiere Pro runs like a beast. So it really depends on your own computer software. Now, probably one of the most controversial things with Premiere Pro and probably one of the things that people aren't aware of before they choose Premiere Pro as their video editing software is it's not great for creating social media videos like Instagram Reels, TikToks, YouTube Shorts. Now, there's a lot of features that Premiere Pro touts about that make it easy maybe to convert long form to short form using their auto reframe tool or maybe the vertical workspace, which aligns all the panels accordingly so it's easier to work in a vertical layout. But at the end of the day, probably one of the most important aspects when it comes to social media content, specifically when it comes to vertical videos and layouts, is animated captions or graphics. Now. 
you can do it, but you have to do it manually. And a lot of times I use extensions and different plugins to help me accomplish this. So not only do you have to pay for Premiere Pro, but sometimes you have to get extra extensions and plugins to do something specific in the software. So let me show you quickly what you'd have to do manually in Premiere Pro. First, you'd have to transcribe using the transcription tool in the top left, and then you can click the CC button to create captions. You have different options here, but for animated captions, you probably want to dial in the exact lines, characters, whether you want single lines, double lines, Let's say if you wanted the fancy, like Mr. Beast, one word animated captions, you'd probably turn all these down to one so only a few words appear at a time. Turn the lines to single and go to create captions. You can see that they're loading in the top left. And now you can see that we have our captions here. All right, so I have these captions down below, but you can't animate these. What you have to do is actually select them, then go up to captions graphics, upgrade caption to graphic. Now they're a graphic. And now that they're even a graphic, now you have to animate them manually and it's just not a fun time here. What I've actually been using instead to create social media content is Riverside. If you've seen my shorts on my channel, that's why I use to edit, create animated captions. And it has a lot of the same features Premiere Pro has to auto edit and kind of select, trim down your footage for you. If you wanna learn about Riverside, I will link it in the top right corner. Feel free to go check that out in the card. You can either use a separate software like Riverside or you can install extensions inside Premiere Pro. So for animated captions, I've been using Submachine. And this is a dedicated extension that helps you create animated captions for you inside Premiere Pro. To make life easier, you would probably have to use a different software or tool to animate captions if you're a social media content creator. But at the end of the day, there isn't really a correct software to choose. It's not like this one's better because of this, because there's always going to be pros and cons no matter which software you choose. Um, so I just recommend watching a few videos like this, seeing which features matter most to you and make a decision that way. If you want to try Premiere Pro, you can start for free today using a free trial. I will leave a link down in the video description. Feel free to go check them out. Try it for free before you buy. But make sure you cancel before they charge you because a lot of times what people don't realize about Adobe is once you're locked into a plan, you're locked in for the whole year. And if you are considering Adobe, I do recommend watching this video right up here on why people don't like them. It's very interesting. They're in hot water with their creators and it's something you might want to be aware of if you're considering buying from Adobe. But that does it for this video. We'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.